we're just having a little top up for you because your mum hasn't got very much milk at the moment so hopefully she'll get more milk in the next day or two and you won't need the extra but at the moment she's got a little bit of milk but really not very much <coughs> just going to have a little top up now and then Just checking the ewes and lambs at Summer Hill here. Um, high nature status, National Trust place we've got near the sea. Um, so everything, second time today I've checked them. So we're just checking it's about middle of the afternoon. And we've just found um, a lamb that's been, well, savaged by a crow. So it's basically had its eyes and bum pecked. Um, so yeah, it's not, not pretty really, but the way nature is unfortunately but it's off a single it's a single so it's um off 17. is that the which is the black one shouting or the gray one shouting so she's not got a lamb now which isn't great we'll have to keep an eye on it from a much better point of view um, <clears throat> But the rest of them are all looking all right, I think. I can't see anything else that's been savaged. So, it's okay. Should just double check all of them. So it's Monday the 23rd of March. Um, so we're obviously in the grip of the coronavirus at the moment. So we are trying to be cautious and not mix with people as much as possible. Um, obviously we're in the middle of lambing as well, so that's pretty difficult for us to to do that um, in terms of stay in the house, but we are pretty much sort of self-isolating-ish. Um, <clears throat> but we are pretty much just us all over the time anyway. Um, we haven't got any meat deliveries now for about a month, so yeah, we shouldn't see a great deal of people. Um, but really need to be here because obviously we're in the middle of lambing. Um, yeah. So this little guy was born about 20 minutes ago, I suppose. Um, he's up already. He's a big lamb, actually. Say so I call him a little guy. He's quite a big lamb. Need a little bit of help, but not too bad. Mum's just washing him at the moment. He's literally just stood up. Um, it's an older lamb, and then it's another lamb from this morning, but he's about an hour old, I think. He's just starting to feed. We've obviously got a few other sets of twins from yesterday. So this is, yeah. oh, they're actually from the day before, the number 21. Although they don't... She doesn't actually have that much milk, so we've been topping them up with a bottle. So they've just had their top-up bottle this morning. Um, and they seem to just be doing a little bit better with it, so hopefully... Then then we'll have some more milk in the next couple of days and they won't need the to top up but at the moment I'm quite happy just topping them up. I really want them going hungry so. Anyway, it's breakfast time. Right, well you've got some sheep that have got out for a gate. Shut properly. Because the person that put it in was a bit of a wally. Bring them out and then. Um, sounds like we've got sheep somewhere else as well. But deal with the ones I can see first. Those lambs is hers, which is great. <laughs> Rest. 
Reggie seems to have decided to go in the saddle pen for some reason. I think he's a little bit scared of all the mud now though. <laughs> come on, Reggie, come here. Come on, come on, come on. Reggie, come here. Reg. The ladies don't mind it. But Reg doesn't seem so keen. <laughs> Reggie, come on. Reg. Hey, come here. <laughs> what have you even got in there? <laughs> Reg, come on. Reggie. Come here. Come on. Come here, Reg. Reggie, come on. Oh. So I'm not sure why, but the stupid dog here seems to have got himself stuck in the cell pen and he doesn't seem to like any of the mud. Do you want rescuing, Reg? <coughs> oh, you're relieved now, are you? What a muppet. So this is a little, little bit of scruffy hedge really that I'm going to just try to lay a little bit. Um, it's probably more in need of coppicing than laying, but we'll see how we get on. So the first problem I've got is there's some really old wire just randomly growing in the trees from the hedge. Um, ideally I need to get that out, but um, it's not the easiest of things, so we'll see how we get on. I um, might have to go and get some wire cutters and just try to cut it out as best as I can. It's only a little bit of hedge, so I was hoping just to um, use a pruning saw just to cut the little stumpy bits off after we bent it down with the bill hook. Um, I've got a chainsaw with me if I need it, but I'm hoping not to use it. The Shetlands kind of like to do it on their own, don't really like to be in the pens. Um, when they at least slam, they like to go in after so their lambs are safe, but they quite like finding their own little spot to lamb in. Slam!
Okay, so it's a pretty sunny day, but um, it's actually still the end of March, so spring hasn't really started up here. Um, so I've just had a go at hedge laying for the first time. Um, I've kind of stopped the check the sheep actually, and one's just lambed, so that's a good job I did, I guess, although she didn't need my help. Um, yeah, so this is it. You can see it's not like the prettiest job, and it's not a particular style. You can see it's kind of lying down. Um, in one direction. The camps will come along and cut it um, with the direction of the traffic essentially so given it's level it made sense to lay it that direction and then it will get cut in that direction. Um, yeah you can see it's quite a big one but um, I basically just cut through with a bill hook make a hinge and then just end up um, you cut this little flat stump back flat then because it sort of obviously sticks up so you cut it into like a little flat spot and it should stop the, the water getting in too much and it rotting although to be honest I've never done it before so this is just a theory off a YouTube video um, but there's much better ones than this for um, for, you, for hedge laying um, given I've never done it before but I've kind of had a go um, but it's kind of not too bad. Some of it's a bit longer, so I've had to kind of um, cut it to bend it back in. You can see it's I made the hinge. I've managed to cut a couple of walking sticks out of it as well, which is nice. And there's a little bit more to go. I might do it tomorrow, hopefully. Um, I think there might be some more walking sticks in that bit. There's quite a lot of black falling in that section, so they should hopefully be all right. Um, Oh, yeah. Literally, I've just been away 10 minutes and she's dropped the second one. And literally, there, well, one, the first one's up on its feet, and the second one is having a good go at it, to be honest. So these are looking like really nice lambs. This was a bit of an experiment, to be honest. This is 669. So, this is Apollo's mum. So, one of our Ram's mums. So, we couldn't. So Apollo is the dad to Boris, so both of our Shetland rams are both related to 669, which is this ewe. <clears throat> last year we bred her to, um, well the last couple of years actually we've bred her to Edwin, the grey face Dartmoor. But they're just quite slow growing rams, uh, quite, quite slow growing lambs. <clears throat> and they've got a really nice fleece and nice skin. Um, but um, they do grow really slowly so there's a place for it but I don't necessarily want to do it with too many sheep um, so this we actually put forge a massive texel ram onto 669 one of my, one of my, um, one of my favorite sheep really so I've got a few favorites but um, 669 was the, was the Moritz Shetland in front of us and then um, Got a bit of a soft spot for blackbird because she also has really pretty lambs and um, also a bit of a soft spot for scraggy she's a molly lamb we had and she ended up with fly strike hence the name scraggy but um, she's never really meant to hang around but she has and I quite like her too but, but these two lambs I'm actually really pleased I didn't have to pull them people said when I said I was going to put a texel onto a Shetland they said I was crazy because um, the Shetlands are tiny and the Texels are massive. But actually, she's lambed them on her own. I did put the first one in front of her just because um, it wasn't moving straight away. But I just cleared its nose. But I didn't have to pull it or anything. She lambed it herself. She's lambed the second one in no time at all. So um, <coughs> can't complain really. Sorry about the slightly rubbish footage. My hands are a little bit shaky because I've been using a bill hook for the last couple of hours. So, um, but really nice looking lambs. Actually, really quite pleased with them. Nice size, actually, as well. Not too big, not too small. Good. <coughs> so I've just um, put them in the pen. Well, I put the lambs in the pen. Uh, you just followed, to be fair. 
Um, so I've just iodined the, the navels. And they are both ulams, which I am very pleased with. So I, the reason I did it is I'm curious to know how they're or how they'll grow and their fleece and stuff. But equally, I'm intrigued to know how they'll perform as used. So um, we shall see. Hopefully they'll do well and we'll keep them on ourselves.